Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been pondering nuclear stages off to the side and now I'm bringing that pondering into RP1 to see if we can get a nuclear stage that will help us with our crewed Mars landing. And, you know, we have to plan ahead because it's going to be expensive and take a lot of time to develop. I've also considered uh, moving up the nuclear propulsion technology as far as what we're going to research, but we also have to research something that I don't have queued here. Uh, whoops. Because we would want with a nuclear stage hydrogen and oxygen RCS, which apparently now we have available to us. Uh, so Hydrolox RCS, which we will also have to purchase, but that we don't have the technology for. So we need reusable attitude control in order to get that kind of RCS. But this is the stage I've cooked up with a Nerva 2. And I felt that it was most important for us to get a nuclear engine that had a lot of ignitions so we didn't have to, uh, so that we could reuse it. I think the reusing it idea is key here. Uh, I also didn't particularly want low thrust weight ratio, but then again, uh, given the choices that we have, just scrolling up to see that there aren't even more choices that I missed. There are a lot of these things. Um, this seems to be the best bet. Uh, number one also has 60 ignitions, but of course it has less thrust for pretty close to the same mass. This has a lot of thrust. So that gets our burn time low, which will mean more accurate transfers to Mars. And of course, this isn't going to do the entire transfer to Mars. The payload will have to complete it. It'll just do the first 3,200 meters per second and come back down to low Earth orbit. And with a 45 ton payload, I think it can do that. It can boost a 45 ton payload out to 3,200 meters per second and then come back down. Though that was without these liquid oxygen tanks that I've added. I might want to cut down on those. They're a little bit heavy. And then we've got the RZ-20s, though they should be Mark IIs as backup engines. Of course, they only have 10 ignitions each, so we have to be careful with all these ignitions here. Uh, but yeah, a review of the nuclear engines uh, gave me the idea that maybe the Nerva 2 is the best. Uh, it's got 867 kilonewtons with 13 tons, and this, for instance, has 239 kilonewtons with 10 tons, and that's similar to Nerva 1, and this is sort of similar as well. And so Nerva 2 has way more thrust, and then the others all have low ignition count. And I would like to use this a lot so we don't have to send it up again. Uh, there was the SNTP that I used for my space plane, the um, scramjet, and that one only has five ignitions. It has much greater efficiency, and it's really light. Uh, in fact, suspiciously light. Even when I made a particle bed uh, system, I didn't make the system that light uh, so compared to its thrust. So I'm suspicious of this one, <laughs> but uh, anyway, all of them produce radiation, so we don't want our crew to be docked to it for very long, but then there, a lot of the missions are cargo. They all seem to have 99.9% .9 reliability initially, so that's good. Uh, this SMTP seems to be able to run off of many, many things, so that's another factor, but I think we'll stick to hydrogen, and we've got the 100 MLI layers on here. And that means we need a launcher capable of launching this stage though, right? And we could launch it underfueled, uh, but we need at least a launcher that can refuel it at one go. And that means being able to refuel 60 tons of the hydrogen, and maybe, I mean it depends on how much we actually use of the oxygen, but uh, that could be, oh, 16 tons of oxygen. So 70, we're looking at a 75, 76 ton launcher. And then we could on launch under fuel this so that it's 75 tons. And then it could launch with half a fuel load. And then we could replenish it as necessary. So yeah, and then that could allow us to bring the payload. Well, see now if we bring a payload plus the fuel for this, then we're in a bind because payload plus fuel for this would be 105 tons, let's say. So maybe we should have a launcher that's capable of 105 tons and call it a day. Uh, so those are the things I'm thinking about, but I really don't want cores that are more than 7.5 meters. So far we've been limited to four meters. So this is quite a luxury. Uh, and 
the reason is because the tooling cost is really high. And then we also have to worry about the unlock cost of the engine. The unlock cost of all the engines seems to be over a million. And then it's just a matter of, uh, basically it's a baseline million. And then whichever one you pick from the nuclear engines, uh, that determines the extra bit. And so we've got an unlock cost for this engine, and it's just this engine. Oh, we've got 35,000 for uh, the RCS. But yeah, 1.3 million. And then the tooling cost on the tank is 300,000. So that's a lot. But I think 7.5 meters is our sweet spot as far as the diameter of our rocket would be concerned. And yeah. So now we have to have a rocket that can launch this. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let me. Uh, we, we will set that aside for now. What we want is this reusable attitude control, whatever it is. Um, large station attitude control. I assume attitude control is over here. Oh, reusable attitude control is all the way up here. Oh gosh. Well, we've got a thousand signs and probably more trickling in. That's got to take a long time to get to that. Do we have the inflatable heat shield somewhere? Uh, that's a CSD 100 heat shield. That is that really that advanced or amazing? special heat shields, but we've got the procedural ones, so I don't care too much about special stuff. Where's where's our inflatable one, though? That's something people have actually tested. So why, and there's one, there's a stock one. They've tested an inflatable heat shield and there's a stock one. So why isn't it in here somewhere? So, oh, the claw is here. They, d they decided that the claw was legit. Inflatable heat shields, no? Well, maybe I'm just missing it. Okay, well, we'll definitely get the claw. Well, I really want this Hydrolox RCS, so we'll, we'll just try this. We can cancel research if I decide to prioritize something else. But okay, we get up to here, and then we need uh, 1,200 and a little bit more. So... That's the situation. We also need more money to unlock the nuclear engine. Uh, we don't need advanced nuclear propulsion just yet. Let's prioritize the RCS stuff. So as far as the Nerva 2 goes, we'll potentially have it by May 2020, which is not too long. I potentially want to start building a new pad. If we're going to have a bigger rocket, start building a new pad now. So while we're waiting for the Mars window. So let me get to work considering what our big rocket would look like. Okay, so maybe, just maybe, we don't need a new pad after all. I've tried to make a rocket that is within the 1,300 ton limit of the current pad, which also means that we can use the existing avionics from our Arcturus rocket. But uh, you can see that we are at 8,608 meters per second right now, which isn't great. Uh, but I did have the option of underfueling the stage and then just sending the rest of the fuel up later on. And so we can sort of dump, uh, well, let's say half the liquid oxygen and half the hydrogen. And suddenly we're at 9,607. Uh, so all this rocket would need to do is carry the fuel and uh, ideally the payload. What are we actually carrying right now here? Um, this is... 72 tons. So we're talking about a rocket that can carry 72 tons to orbit. That's a little bit less than I wanted. I said 76 would be good. But then if we want to send a payload with the fuel, we would want 106. So it's not quite doing that. But this would be like an interim system before we get the new pad. And so how am I doing this? Well, um, no, this is rotated wrong. Uh, we, we have a lot of Vulcane engines. <laughs> uh, we have seven Vulcane engines on the cores and five on the boosters. I might put seven on the boosters. Uh, I'll think about that. But uh, we have these awkwardly shaped boosters. And the trick here was that we're using the same tank as, well, the same form factor as we're using with this tank here. So that we don't have to retool it. So 7.5 meters, 20 meter length. And down here we have another 7.5 meter, 20 meter length, and then another one. 
and then these are also 7.5 meter 20 meter tank except the top is 4 meters which is good because then this tank gets to be 4 meters and with that being 4 meters that's already tooled as well see tooled uh, we had 4 meter 7.5 meter length tanks on the Arcturus rocket <laughs> so the Arcturus rocket is really small compared to all of this so that is 1,200, let's say 50 tons, 1.19 thrust weight ratio. And so that's a horrible thrust weight ratio, but eventually ends up being pretty good. Uh, we could potentially, I mean, I don't want, uh, obviously with that thrust weight ratio, maybe we should have more engines on the boosters and fewer on the core, maybe six engines on each thing would be better than seven and then five and five. Um, I'll think about that. We're not wedded to this yet. But there's possibilities here without creating a new pad, is what I'm saying. And that would be good. That would be good for us. So what I'm going to do right now is actually, uh, for comparison purposes, uh, tool this tank. I think we're going to be using a tank with, of this size. So uh, we'll just stick to this tank and we can tool this tank and spend our unlock credit. Our integration time is humongous, but is that with the max number of people? Well, that's not too bad, right? Integration time, 226 days for something like this. That's with the nuclear engine on here, mind you. The rollout time of 90 days is a little bit worrisome. I guess that's because of the nuclear engine, too. So uh, let me say, what, what happens if I just take that off? How long is it? Twenty-four days. It's still pretty bad. That is with maximum number of engineers, two thousand one hundred sixty-five. So okay, but we haven't tooled everything yet. Maybe I've got the money. Let me just go ahead and tool the rest. Payload fairings, seven point five meter payload fairings will probably be needing anyway. Okay, yeah. So one hundred thirty-seven thousand worth of tooling. I guess it's a little bit better, but still, it's a hefty rollout time, but that's because of the nuclear engine. And hopefully we won't be launching that too often. Another reason why we want a nuclear engine with many ignitions is that it's a huge rollout time, so... And a huge rollout cost, too. Okay, but that's just theoretical. Let's move on to more practical things. Well, I mean, should we build one? <laughs> not, not the nuclear engine. We can't build a nuclear engine yet, but we could test the rocket with some other payload. Let me save the rocket. It's not Arcturus, it's not Deneb. We've been doing those. Can't use Vega, because that's been used. Um, what's another star name that we can go for? We'll say this is the Sirius rocket. It's very serious. So I've decided that to warm up our Sirius launcher, we are going to send over a tug to Mars. After all, we always seem to need tugs, and we might as well send one. So it's got solar panels in this case. I thought about RTGs and we might go there, but for now, solar panels. We also want to uh, give the AJ-10 advanced short nozzle one a, a bit of a practice because we might be using it for other things soon. Um, yeah, uh, so we're going to give it uh, time to get the flight data. And we also have backup uh, 3.6 kilonewton thrusters, but not really backup because this only has a burn time of seven and a half minutes and the rest of the time we'll have to be on those thrusters. So yeah, probably this is going to help us capture around Mars and we'll just do a manual capture instead of aero capture. And then it'll have whatever delta V it has in order to help out our payloads potentially. It's 30 tons and we have a 30 ton controller here. And we have uh, the Apollo docking system. So we'll have to make sure everything else has that. We do have some extra instruments. We have instruments in the core as well as this RPWS thing that will counterbalance the antenna over here. This is the S-band antenna that we'll be using and it should be able to communicate back. Inside the core, we just have the UHF band. Oop, that should be 100. Anyway, that's just for calculation purposes, but uh, that's just for communicating for, with uh, satellites around Earth orbit. So that's the payload, which is at 30 tons. And then we have, well, we have a stage with eight RZ-20 engines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've done this thing. It's not, it's even worse than the Saturn 1 thing. Um, we have a 140 ton core there. 
and that's the same one that we're using on the nuclear stage so we've already tooled it and maybe we should tweak these out and increase the size of them uh, I think that size is tooled as well so all right so we have that stage it gives 4,000 meters per second so that will have to be to complete orbit and then if we need to use the payload to finish up the transfer to Mars we will so then we have these short little payload fairings that we're going to have to tool again but uh, yeah uh, so the the launch system can only provide about 8,600 there and then and that's because everything else is 105 tons of course that's beyond the limit that we had alright so let's go ahead and tool 77,000 and well we'll uh, send this out to the pad and then we will see how long it's going to take with however many people we can actually put at that pad it's an awkward looking rocket with these boosters but hey what can we do oh um, oh we have to uh, get more GSE oh the height limit is too high too hmm by five meters well, we'll just modify that as the same, at the same time as we do the GSC. I don't know if 24 meters seems like a lot. Let's see. Um, length limit 27. Max modify cost 374,000. Gosh. And if we weren't doing a change on the length limit, it'd still be really expensive. Height limit. We weren't doing that. It'd still be really expensive. <laughs> uh, we're not increasing the maximum tonnage. But I guess we're basically creating a new pad after all. Here we're keeping the existing length, width, and height and maximum tonnage, and it still wants the increased modify cost. I guess it's a lot of hydrolocks, but geez. How much would a really big pad be if we just create a new pad? That's a million right there, build cost. Construction time, three years. At 1,700, this could be launched at it. Maybe we should not human rate it. And then, well, that doesn't save us that much, though. Uh, but that means we can't launch this immediately to on this window, on this Mars window. Uh, how long will just this modification take? 213 days. I mean, if we had a lot of engineers working on it, it's still possible we could launch this on this window. We'll modify the existing pad for now, I think. But the current yearly upkeep is 86,000, and the estimated yearly upkeep here is 167,000. So that's not wonderful. Okay, ELA-6 is being renovated for this rocket. We'll give it a go. Okay, it is March 7th, 2020, and our pad is ready to go now, so I'm going to build the rocket here. And we need to unlock these parts. Uh, I think we don't have anything left to tool, right? Okay, unlock those. 138 days until the window, so let's make sure that we've got enough people at the pad in order to take care of this. Okay, Mars window, July 25th. This completes July 13th, but there's rollout time. So I don't know how that's going to work out for us, but max of 2,165 engineers, so we can't do it too much faster. we got to hire another 100, though. Okay, so that's the Mars tug there. We also have to roll out everything else, too. But those, maybe we could do a little bit ahead of time. Okay, well, I'm going to get some staff over here for the rollouts, and we're going to start rolling out right away. We can probably go on the 25th. Let's let's just try it now. We've got a lot of missions to send after all. 
Okay, good enough. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. We have one engine loss. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, that's what's happening. Hold on. We gotta try and dump it. Well, we're going straight now. <laughs> now we're uh, Denim A3 suddenly. May or may not be problematic, we'll find out. Okay, well, I think I was supposed to do it so that the core doesn't, like, end at the same time, but... Well... Probably just some inefficiency there. Oh, I forgot, we might need solar panels on this stage. We might not have enough power for its controller. Okay, next stage. RZ20s, our favorite. I also don't know if it's Deep Space Core. So we might just dump it on this one. I was looking to get a read on the boil off situation, but we'll see. Definitely went too high here. Okay, well, that'll have to do for now. All right, well, what does MechJeb say about getting to Mars, hmm? Well, 4,375 if it's ASAP, it says. Uh, lowest in two years doesn't help me. Maybe I did it at the wrong time, but we do have this much, so... Maybe, yeah, maybe we don't, won't do boil off on this one. I need to put solar panels on this stage to do the boil off. So, we'll just expend it. Okay, selling fuel down, and ignition. Okay, 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 we've gone too far. <laughs> uh, or it seems like it. Uh, let me see if the RCS can help us here. Okay, okay, we have an encounter with Mars. We probably want to make course correction. Oh, maybe not, let's see. Oh yeah. It's pretty close though, it's not bad. Okay. Yeah, we can work with that. Okay. Separation. Unfortunately, these don't seem to be tracking solar panels. I needed them to be retracting solar panels was the most important thing. Okay, so it's spinning, and then we're going to make a mid-course correction, where we will focus on it again, but it's arriving at Mars basically in a year. Well, that doesn't look too bad, just 7 meters per second on the mid-course correction. Well, let's just leave it like that, just outside the atmosphere. Inclined, it'll hit somewhere interesting. And we will add that alarm. Okay, so not a big deal on the mid-course correction. It's spinning and recharging. And let's just go ahead and launch something else. But I'll add some solar panels to that stage so that we can do the boil off check with the further missions. All right, so I've added solar panels to this stage for this particular Ike 1 mission, but that does take more time, and we don't have a lot of engineers on this pad right now, so that's a bit of a problem. I don't think I can do this for all of them, but we really only need to do the boil off check for one, really. Uh, this does have the 100 MLI layers. We've got these little blanket solar panels uh, scaled down quite a lot, and that should be enough. I've also changed the core out. The previous core was not a deep space core, so I've put a deep space core and one that we've previously tooled before, of course. But it still takes a lot of time to build when we don't have that many engineers, and the current uh, number of engineers gives us... Well, we'll have to send more engineers. So, gotta save these edits. And we're going to get some more engineers to that pad so it completes it a little bit quicker. I guess I'll just hire some more. 
All right, well, that'll get that done in time. We'll roll out another mission, but again, at this time we'll be disposing of that stage and we'll just... We're just trying for different tests as far as the entry situation is concerned. And of course, we'll be landing in different spots to get different science on the surface of Mars. So that works out for us too. I'm going to roll out this one. Oh, we have to recondition, of course. That takes until July 4th. That takes a while. Okay, rolling out. Mars tug will be ready. We'll have to start rolling it out too. Okay, so rolling this out. Uh oh! August 5th. No, that's no good. I mean, it might not be too bad. Let's see. August 5th. Well... Doesn't seem too bad. It's like 100 meters per second extra. Insertion delta V about the same. So, okay, we'll, we'll let that go. We won't try to rush that. Let's start rolling that out. Got some science from Jupiter Space High there. So we are raking in the science. Good thing too, since our research is actually getting done to some extent. And maybe we have enough for another level of the RCS. Yeah, this large docking ports. Well, I mean, whatever. We're getting it. I want my Hydrolox RCS. Okay, that'll just give me an idea. All right, let's try this. And ignition. We lost one again. Uh, we'll dump it. Tight. Very tight. We've got it off. All right. Very awkward. Good thing the transfer stage has plenty of margin. Maybe, just maybe, we should have different boosters on the detonate rocket. Oh, looks like Don's approaching. I forget if there's an action group for the engines. Apparently not. Okay, boosters. Bearings and staging. Okay. All right, staging. And this time I didn't toss it too far up. All right, we have shut down and we have 4,861 meters per second to work with and we're not planning to carry the stage with us. We didn't put solar panels on this one, so uh, we should have enough unless something really crazy has happened. Yeah, I checked in the VAB. These really don't track, so that's a sad thing. But again, we needed ones that we could tuck back in. Ignition. I'm just gonna go with the burn indicator here. Oh, oh, I still went too far. So we're probably gonna have to correct that, but RCS worked last time, so let's just do that. Okay, well, we seem to have a very different approach to Mars here. Coming in southerly right now. Okay, we'll separate off. Polar. I guess we can take Polar. Depends on comms when we get there. More than a year to get there. That's fine, we'll probably be doing the space station stuff while they're on their way. So, alright, that's our mid-course correction. Again, 7.1 meters per second. And we'll see how it does. But We're probably going to throw that off right now because we need to turn to the sun. Well, it is recharging right now, but once we get further away from the sun, we'll want that fixed, so... Okay. Charging. Okay, we had some talk at the beginning of this one, but next time we'll just do straight launches. We have three launches off of ELA-5 and then the big one at ELA-6. So look forward to that. 
But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.